Let's mount up. Oh, come on! You have got to be kidding me! Come on! Yeah! Rays fans, how's it going? It is on today. We're hanging out in the beautiful wild continent of Australia for Crankworks Cans Downhill. Northeast side of the country, we've got rainforest, we've got the Great Barrier Reef, and we brought Crankworks right here. Mountain bike heritage is always so rich in this country, and we kicked things off yesterday. On the right note here for Crankworks Cans, the new stop on the tour. It was all about speed and style. We had the men and we had the women. Thomas Lemoyne made it a full sweep of the season so far, winning the first three speed and style events. Harriet Burbage Smith, had the Australian crowd going nuts. They were cheering her on, competing on home turf and racking up the shoey count. She didn't just do one shoey on the podium. She filled her up again, two double shoeys, making a double there for Harriet Burbage Smith, celebrating that big win in the speed and style cans. We had Anthony Missouri down there in third place for the men, Garrett Meacham in second. Caroline Buchanan got the bronze and Jordy Smith got the silver. And you know what? We have all three from our female podium last night racing the downhill today. It's going to be a great show. This is an iconic track, so we got plenty to talk about. I'm your host, Cam McCall, and today I am joined in the booth by professional enduro racer, Charlie Murray. What's up, Charlie? This has got to be your favorite discipline here at Crankworx Cans, huh? Downhill? Yeah, I'm really excited to see this one. It's a historic course, as you said. Um, World Champs in 2017, and the course looks awesome. It's physical, it's fast, it's got big jumps and technical sections, so it's gonna be a good race. Absolutely, tons of action on this course, and this course is super iconic. It was the home to the 1996 UCI World Cup Downhill World Champs, and then they brought it back for World Champs again in 2017. Plenty of stories have taken place on this course. Stories that people still talk about to this day. And we're looking at Trail Forks right now. This is that iconic World's DH track. You can see, Charlie, you pointed out when we were looking at this earlier, a couple climbs on the course. Yeah, there's a few big dippers, but apparently you have so much speed that you can climb straight up them without pedaling. So the riders will be happy about that. A lot of iconic features on this course as well. We've got some features named after some of the fastest riders in the world. We got Brosnan's Gap, Mix, Drop, The Generator. We're taking a look at some of those iconic features right there. And you know what, just tons of iconic moments out here. And it's great that we're going to be able to add to those here now that we've brought Crankworks to Cairns. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, yeah, it's 1.8 Ks long the track. And like we said, you, you gotta be so strong to get down pedaling and attacking the whole way to the bottom. So it's gonna be a tough one for sure. So Charlie, you're no stranger to analyzing race courses. In Enduro, you guys are racing so many different courses in the scope of one event. So I know you were able to get out there on course, really look at some of the line options. You took some photos for us as well. We got some stuff to talk about, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I ran up there yesterday and had a look and yeah, just it's really interesting seeing the different lines. And usually you set up for one corner, about two corners behind, but here we're five corners ahead. So coming in here, we've got um, two options. You can either go wide or on the inside over that route there. And it looks like a fast line would be the inside, but actually if you set up on the wide, then when we get to the next um, section, you'll be able to go outside again, which also looks like it might be slower. Like here naturally you go inside, but if you stay outside, it's gonna pay off in the end because we're gonna keep going down and we'll see we have a big straight coming out of this section that you wanna carry speed for. So here again, we're on the outside of this tree so we can make the corner a bit wider and we don't square it off so much. Um, and then yeah, so we're basically crisscrossing down the section. This is the key point here. So you're coming out straight if you're on the inside of this tree, whereas if you're going around the tree, you have to do a big turn and slow down, you lose all your speed. So the guy on the straight line here can carry his speed all the way down to the next, the next drop off on the flat section. It's a lot to remember. I walked up the course earlier this afternoon and I actually saw that section and I kind of just stood there for a while and I was like picking my brain, you know, because it is counterintuitive, especially on that right hander that you pointed out at the beginning. You're looking at that outside line, you think, why would you meander all the way over there? But it's all about that setup domino effect and the exit speed. A lot of 
a lot of choices to make on this course and a lot of riders who have raced this track a ton of time. So how much is that insider uh, veteran knowledge going to come into play out here? Well, I mean, we saw already yesterday, Troy's in the top spot by 1.8 seconds. He had a smooth run, it was clean, but he's in control and he has so much experience here. So like you said, and Tracy too, you know, she's got a huge margin, about six seconds um, up on second place and she's a local. She grew up here and still lives close by. So I think the experience is going to pay off just you know, it's a different sort of track. We're in the jungle. We're not usually in the jungle. We have some physical bits. You've got to really carry your speed. So it's different than, uh, you know, some of the World, World Cup tracks we see in the other Crankworx tracks. Yeah, for sure. And that was just one key sector. I know you took some more photos. Let's let's get into that next key sector with, with the line options. And tell me what you would choose. Yeah, so coming down here, we've got this kind of steep section. And then after that, it's flat all the way to the finish. So here you come over the rock where the circle is, and you're heading down towards that arrow, which is a takeoff, actually. And you've got to think about where you're setting up because if we're out wide, we've got a big right-hander at the bottom. So if we're wide, we're going to carry some more speed through. So this is your landing zone here in that, in that box. And if you're in the middle, you're going to be kind of squaring off the next corner. But if we're out on the left on that bank, you can catch some downslope and really carry the speed through the whole next flat section. And i got to be honest, this is just always the way it is. But when you're looking at onboard POV views, it, it doesn't do it justice. That is such a steep section with multiple drops and uh, yeah, it really makes sense to, to kind of gap that you can see rider's it. left section. Yeah, you can see here it's so flat, so it's really key to get the speed out of that corner to carry through this last section. So that is that same section we were just watching via point of view camera. And uh, you can see how you know that POV really shrunk it. It made it look flat. Those are vertical drops there off of rocks. And you see that landing area, that takeoff and that landing on the rider's left section. Yeah, it's amazing how different perspective from the bottom looks a lot more gnarly than what we saw on the GoPro there. So it's fun to see these, uh, these quick photos and those on-camera views of individual sections, but I feel like the best way we can get the big picture of this course is to go on board for a course preview with Mick and Tracy Hanna. Let's do it. How's it going? I'm Mick Hanna, and we're here for the Crankworx Cans Downhill Course Preview. Dropping him. Dropping. Here we go. Follow my sister Tracy. Little drop in here. Taking the A line down the middle. Uh, not the easiest rock garden in the world. God. Yeah. That was probably the first time I've made it through semi clean. Little rhythm section. These jumps get quite big. There's much more heavy rainforest down here. Thick roots and tight turns. Pecky. Technical section here. Move one. That was Crankworks Cairns downhill. Course preview. <laughs> nice run. Well, I couldn't think of a better way to get acquainted with this jungly Crankworx Cans downhill course than to go on board with Mick and Tracy. Hannah, they grew up around here. They know this course like the back of their hand. Mick qualified third for today's race in seating. Tracy qualified first, so definitely keep an eye on them to do well out here today. Challenging weather conditions out here in the tropical rainforest, isn't it? It is, yeah. We had a bit of a rain squall come through before, but luckily that's stopped now, and I think the dirt will be perfect. So fingers crossed the rain holds off for the rest of the afternoon. It's been kind of perfect. We get these little sprinkles just to keep the dust down. And obviously this dirt, if it got a lot of rain, it would become a slip and slide. So it's been pretty perfect. Everybody's sweating through all their gear, but the track is in prime condition. We're going to kick off action here today with our women's elite field. First rider we'll see take to the course is Cassie Boyce. We got some big names early on in the in the lineup, don't we? Yeah, this looks, this looks awesome. I mean, we have, yeah, like you said, the three speed and style podium here in the, in the women's start list. And then also people like you know Jenna Hastings, who was putting on an absolute masterclass in Rotorua last year. And then obviously people like Tracy, who are in seating yesterday. She was on another level. Ellie Smith, Louise Ferguson, Shauna Hearn, and then Tracy Hanna will be the final four to drop into this Crankworx Cans downhill course right now. Take a look at our hot seat occupant at the moment, Danielle Beecroft, holding it down, feeling good in this nice tropical hot seat area we've set up for the riders. 
I know she'd like to hang out there as long as possible, but it's going to be tough competition out there. A star-studded field of women's downhill racers to come. And I walked up the course like we were talking about earlier, and uh, it's a great vibe out there. There's those key sections that you have filled with spectators, and uh, nothing better than hearing those cowbells when you're doing your race run. Yeah, all morning for the juniors, there's been a big crowd out there, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. So I think we're going to hear that, that sound coming down. Look at that. We got the whole family out there getting excited for Crankworks, Cans, Downhill. We had the amateur field put on a show earlier today, and now it's time for the fastest riders of the day to take to this course. I know the locals are so excited that we brought Crankworks to Australia. It's been a long time coming. It's time we do it, and uh, it's been a long time since we introduced a new stop as well. 2017, we introduced... Innsbruck to the Crankworks World Tour. And we used to have a four-stop tour years ago. We're bringing it back to a four-stop tour now. And I think it just feels right. Just like french fries on an afternoon. With some tomato sauce, not ketchup, tomato sauce out here. Yeah, yeah down, down south, tomato sauce. Tomato sauce even. You gotta ask for it too. They don't just offer it like the tomato sauce is like gold. If yeah, you don't yeah. get tomato sauce, just offer to you. You gotta like, hey, can I please have some tomato sauce? You'll sometimes pay extra. <laughs> Same as in New Zealand, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. But yeah, tomato. <laughs> tomato sauce. Tomato. Yeah, yeah, come on. Tomato potato. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's kick this thing off. The Crankworks cans downhill. Let's take this to the top of the course and see Casey, Cassie Voicey loaded up into the gate. All right, it's happening, Charlie. Yeah, she'll be feeling pretty nervous right now, I think. Taking a few deep breaths. Breaking the beam there. All right, Cassie's on course. Let's see if she has what it takes to knock Danielle Beecroft out of that hot seat. She's getting cozy. Oh, she's just gliding over the roots there. A little bit of a tuck, trying to carry speed. It's so physical, you, you know, your arms and legs are just burning at this point in the track. Talk about that, actually. There's. A couple different ways that this course is physical. I mean, rock artists, but also the, the fitness involved as well, right? Yeah, I mean, you've got to be uh, aerobically fit because there's a lot of pedaling. We, we haven't seen it just now, but there's um, a few flat spots, a few little climbs that you've got to do, and then the last bit to the finish line is just a flat out sprint. So we've seen some interesting bike setups because of that, that endurance element to this track, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. People opting for you know stiffer suspension and um, trail bikes. She's just just made it over that jump there, so now she's on this last flat sprint to the finish line. She's carrying good speed, a little bit of a tuck there, absolutely pumping the cranks, trying to catch any little bit of transition she can to mm, generate some speed. Well, Cassie Voicey digging deep right now, but she was a couple seconds back at those splits. We'll see where she can slot into the leaderboard here. Danielle Beecroft, her top time is 4.23. Cassie Boise cruising through about 4.4 behind that. Good enough for third place so far. That was a solid run, but you can just see how physical it is and how hard it is. It almost feels like you got a flat tire on that last bit. Absolutely. You even saw her looking down a little bit, like thinking, wow, is it really this hard to pedal or do I have a flat tire? So let's take it back to that, that really interesting steep section with those drops that we were talking about earlier, Charlie. Yeah, so this is that, that setup. You've got, she's got to get on the right line around these trees here. And it looks like she's on the wide line, so it's just trying to carry speed over the flat bits. You need to be um, coming out of each section with maximum speed. So it's even worth slowing down a little bit to get on the right line so you can have that speed um, over like the next you know, 500 meters of track. Really fast at the top too. Yeah, it's definitely, there's that high speed section when it's coming down the fire road with the jumps and then it goes into the tight stuff. So it's you know, a mix of everything on this track. It does have a great balance. So it's going to be interesting to see who can put all the elements of downhill racing together and grab the win here. We definitely have some big stories playing out for the king and queen of Crankworks overall leaderboard with this being the second to last stop on the tour, the four stops. This is stop number three and somebody we've been watching all season so far is Jordy Scott, she's competing in so many different events. The youngster, 21 years of age out of Henderson, Nevada. She's been doing dual slalom, speed and style downhill, pump track, and whip off. She was coming into Crankworks Cans as 
the overall leader in the Queen of Crankworx standings. Viver Beek was able to knock her out last night based on those speed and style results, but another opportunity to get some valuable points here for Jordy Scott. She's on course. She's looking smooth through there as well, but oh yeah, she's up. She's green. Just over a second there. Which is getting to this kind of tricky part here where it's so physical and you just out of every corner you've got to put in a few pedal strokes and try and keep that speed, pump in the bike. And that's impressive to put a second already into Beecroft. And she's extending. She's extended by just point one of a second there. She's coming into the steeper, steeper drop now. And she goes and nice, she's got the wide line into the corner. And then now it's just carrying speed, sprinting, pumping, pedaling, all the way to the finish line. So already Scott on pace to move into that hot seat right now, coming into the final sprint. He's looking strong. I mean, it's cool to see these riders. Some of them have already had quite a few events on this week, and they're still looking like, you know, they must be tired, but they're still pushing. Oh, look, look, look. The clock is ticking away. Jordy Scott, does she have what it takes? Biddle, biddle. Oh, man, she does it just by Jordy over a half a second. Jordy Scott oh. moves into the lead. New time to beat, 423.29. Man, she's got a lot on her plate. We talked about all the events she's competing in, but school as well. Talk to me about that. Yeah, she's busy. She's yeah, studying uh, biology at the moment as well, so I don't know how she fits it all in. She's obviously training hard because she's strong and fit and... She carried good speed through the, that bottom bit of the course there. Jordy Scott never bored, and we were not bored watching this run right here. We saw her at the early split already in the green, and she kept it consistent. A look back here at that steep section. Yeah, so she did really well here to get out wide, and she's on that hard pack, fast dirt, lots of support in that corner, so she can carry speed all the way down to the finish line. Well, Jordy Scott doing what she needs to do to try to get back to the top of that Queen of Crankworx leaderboard. This is probably the best hot seat we've had all season. <laughs> Come on. At the beach, it looks awesome. Somebody bring her on my top. Watch out for that crocodile. And yeah, we got a lot of heartbeats in, these, uh, in this jungle that can kill you. If the downhill course isn't dangerous and, you know, exciting enough, we got all these creatures out here that want to take you out. Yeah, you don't want to crash just in case you land on a snake or something. <laughs> I know Haz wants to take Jordy Scott out of that hot seat right now, and she's dropping in. She won the speed and style last night. She's looking to add some more points to her name right now for the Queen of Crankworx overall. Let's see how she's sitting on the split here. Just over a second back. She had a good start out of the gate there. All that uh, speed and style practice when the gate starts. So she's also on this outside line here. It's a, it's a little bit easier to ride, but it's hard because you lose your speed coming out into this section here. So you can hear how rough it is. The bike's just chattering over those roots. Yeah, so far in the women's field here, we're seeing a lot of just traditional downhill bike setups, but that's probably going to change as we work through our start list, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Some of the some of the guys I've been talking to have opted for a slightly smaller bike or um, you know more of a trail bike, just to try and keep speed and pump a bit more. Because if you try and pedal a downhill bike, it's uh, it's not not exactly enjoyable. Like we're seeing right now, Harriet Burbage Smith with the final sprint. She's been back by over a second at the splits. She'll move into third place right now. That's solid run. So she didn't really lose any from that split down to the finish. It's quite cool, is that whole bridge to sprint across right at the end. Yeah. <laughs> just hard. brutal. That's when you were just really <laughs> wondering what in the world you're doing with your life right there, where you can taste the blood in your lungs and <laughs> yeah, knowing that every millisecond counts out here in downhill racing. Such a such a quick course, this one. Yeah, it's definitely high speed, and yeah, I mean, yeah, over over three and a half minutes, so. Yeah, it was like, you, I like didn't want to push, and I was like, oh. It was just a section off the rock on. So slippery. slick, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I made it through. I like foot dabbed a bit, and I was like, I like used a little squishy thing. I was like, sea lion. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I wonder if a bit of a bit of that rainstorm that came through, because you just said it was slick out there after the yeah. rock garden. So there was a happened. bit of a downpour about an hour ago, wasn't yeah. there? So that could be having an effect. I mean, we're watching some some rain pour off of the tarp in our booth right now. Ooh, look at this, top of the course, Via Verbeek. 
the reigning Queen of Crankworks from the 2021 season and the current points leader right now. She's on the course via her beak. What's it gonna be? Where's that split time? She's looking strong. She always looks so composed, just a nice relaxed style on oh, the bike. She's going inside there, so that's different than the line of Harriet. Yeah. And you see she's just gonna have more speed coming into this bit here. Gotta try and get over these roots and the less roots you hit, the easier it is to ride. Coming down to this next drop feature. Smooth down there. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Via her beak, over eight seconds in the green. That's impressive. Next level. Let's see if she can um, extend a little bit on this. She's carrying good speed on this flat, but. And she looks still full of energy right now. She's attacking. Her Man. arms can get a little break, but her legs just have to go for it. So the time to beat a 423. It looks like Fires it's going to be good. 100% going to do it. The big question is by how oh. much she has extended that lead. 9.3 seconds. Wow. Good stuff. What a run for Fiverr B. That was awesome. She was, she was just attacking harder than the other riders that we've seen. She was really going for it, especially on that last bit. She's an animal. I mean, there's a there's a reason she's the reigning queen of Crankworks, and she's she's added even more to her plate this season as well. If it's not enough to compete in so many disciplines on the Crankworks World Tour, she's been doing free ride events. We saw her at formation. We saw her at proving grounds. And look at this downhill look race this, run. Look at this line here. So she's going inside the tree that we haven't seen from the girls yet. And I reckon that lines like that is what's really made the difference with nine second advantage. It's all about, yeah, carrying speed, especially on this track. You've got so many undulations, you've got flat bits, and then you've got tight bits. So it's just about carrying the speed and coming into each section with a good momentum. Well, good line choices, great fitness. She looks strong in the final sprint. And it looks like we have Jessica Hoskin up next. Look at the split, Charlie. Yeah, so that, that's still a good time, but I mean, Vea was eight seconds ahead there, so she's probably in second place at the moment. Let's see if she's gonna take this inside. There she goes. She's on the same line as Vea through there. So talk about some of the bits of the course that are higher above our cameras in what Vaya may have done to put so much time into the rest of the field that we've seen so far. Yeah, well, that crowd is almost deafening coming through there. Um, yeah. So further up, there's, the, there's a rhythm section, there's some moto whoops and a few big doubles and jumps. So if you're not finding the perfect downslope on those jumps, then you're losing a lot of speed. And especially two of the jumps have a big uphill after it. So you've got to make it to the sweet spot of the landing to have maximum speed coming up. So I think that's probably where, yeah, someone like Vaya would really, she, so comfortable on jumps, so that's probably where she's making up a lot of time. Crazy scene right here, seven seconds back, good enough for second place. She's still a couple seconds ahead of Jordy Scott, so a great ride there for Hoskin. Good enough for second place, but just really shows how fast the run was from Via Verbeek. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a few seconds for sure. Just had to unclip the foot there and she saved it, but I think those roots, don't know if they're slick or if she just overturned a little bit. So next rider we're going to see, really successful in Rotorua last year, Jenna Hastings. And um, she's the junior world champion in Leger. So she's in the elite race today. But yeah, she's got those rainbows in the junior category this year. So talented rider. She's been what kind of around. confidence comes with being able to rock those rainbow stripes? So we're just checking out some action from Rotorua at the moment. Coming off to this off camera section. She just has looked so comfortable on the bike and like nice, solid body position. She's been traveling around with Bernard Kerr and the Pivot, Pivot Factory Racing team and I know she's been soaking up all the knowledge like a sponge and it's paying off for her because she's just improving at every race. So the youngster, Jenna Hastings, I mean, we see so much talent emerged from locations that we bring the Crankworks World Tour to. She's from Rotorua, 
New Zealand, she's the junior world champion right now. I mean, it's going to be exciting to see the next few years what kind of talent we see emerging from Cairns, Australia. But right now, it's all about Jenna Hastings on course. Solid start there. She came out of the start gate with a few strong pedal strokes. She's coming up for that first split, and she's Ooh. green. <laughs> Two seconds in the green. The Lightning McQueen bike is uh, doing its job down here this afternoon. Don't get too cozy, Vaya. So she's taking the outside setup line there, so she will hopefully be getting inside, yeah. Inside that tree, and then she's got the fast exit into this next drop section. Oh! Come on, Jenna! Let's go! 1.5 ahead still. We got a good crowd out here, too. Oh, it's going to be close, I think. Because we know how strong Vaya was on the bottom section. So here we go. It's just flat out sprinting and speed to the bottom now. Pulling up for that jump. Oh, let's see how fit she is right now. We saw Vaya so strong in this final sprint. What does Jenna have? She's, She's 1.5 in the lead at the last split. Can she hold that lead? She's grinding. She, she looks so strong. Oh, look She's at the clock powering. ticking down. She oh. does it. She extends in that bottom section. Jenna Hastings into the hot seat by 2.2. New time to beat a 4.11. Whoa! Whoa, is right. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Uh, no, I was not too worried. No. Your eyes are watering or something. I'm not, I'm not quite Why sure. are you crying? She says. I'm not crying, you're crying. I'm crying. My eyes are sweating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get a seat to the cross this time. I'm not surprised her legs are burning because that was such a good sprint at the bottom. What a performance. I mean,. You see somebody cross the finish line in first by nine seconds, like Vaya, and you think, all right, that's probably gonna stand. And then look at the youngster putting it to her. Yeah. She had a good line through there, getting up on the bank and just carrying the speed into that corner. And like we said, that takes you all the way to the finish if you can you know, carry good speed out of there. Jenna Hastings, she's gonna do, she's gonna go very far in this sport. Representing Rotorua, New Zealand, way to go. Yeah, Next rider we're, we're going to see to drop, she's gearing up at the top of the course, Ellie Smith. Ellie Smith, the, she, 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 oh, we're going to have an interview with Jenna. So Jenna, way to go, great run out there. Uh, did you hit all your lines, everything go as planned? What a time. Um, I think there was one line that I missed, but I can't really remember where. I remember thinking at the time, oh, that wasn't where I was supposed to go, but I just keep going. Well, you know what? It's a great time. We're going to see how long it's going to hold up. Congratulations. We're going to see who we have getting ready to drop in at the top. Way to go. Thank you. Isn't that awesome when you see such a, a fast run and you hear, oh, yeah, I think I lost a little time up there. You go, wow, you could have done even better. That's so great. And, you know, that's just, uh, that's just that professional attitude. Yeah, it was great. I could have done better, though. Here we go. Yeah, I guess, it, you know, the, these riders are their own worst critics. They're really critical of their performance, but... I guess you have to be if you want to be the best. Well, time holding up so far for Jenna Hastings. We've got Ellie Smith on course right now, red at the first split. Is she gonna make it inside this tree? Yeah. So uh, yeah, Ellie's the uh, Oceania champion at the moment. Oh, getting close, she's pulling it back a bit. Only oh. 0.6 back. See how she goes down the steep, steep section here. Smooth. Oh, jumping into that burn. Wow, I mean, Hastings was so strong at the bottom, but look, she's trimmed a bit of time here. Oh, she's Ellie Smith is going to need an absolute perfect sprint. Look at this. She's Tracy getting ready sprint. at the top. It looks so painful. I can almost feel how oh, feel the burn. Oh, come on, dig deep. Nothing else matters right now other than putting down the power. The full body going into these cranks. So look at that. She lost time at the bottom. Ellie Smith going into second place at least. That shows us how much Jenna was attacking on that last little bit. Oh, man. I mean, when your head's bobbing, that means I got me nothing else left, doesn't it? Well, I yeah. got 0.6 back, and then you went back to two. Yeah, <laughs> strong. Oh, that was a really solid run from Ali there. Well, talk about you know what we can foreshadow for the end of this elite women's field here. Tracy Hanna was quite a bit ahead in seating. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was six seconds ahead and just just went under four minutes. So um, 
I mean, if she can do something similar to that today, it's going to be really hard for anyone else to beat. Yeah, I was speaking to Tracy earlier and she was saying it's just about carrying speed. Like, all she's trying to do is tell herself not to break when she thinks she should, so she can carry speed, carry speed. So next rider to drop into this Crankworx Cans downhill course will be Louise Ferguson. She's hanging out in Queenstown, New Zealand right now. Not a bad place to cultivate your mountain bike skills. She's originally from Fort William, Scotland. Not another great place to, to kick off your mountain bike career. Two iconic locations in this sport, but Queenstown downhill last year, she won it. The Alexandra Super D last year, she won it and rode at Rua the end of the season for the World Tour last year, fourth place. So she's been steadily climbing the ladder right now. But right now it's all about this hot seat occupant, Jenna Hastings, who greased this run. And it's gonna be interesting to see if this will hold up against the yeah, final three riders we have coming up. It was a really solid run. I mean, we heard her say that she made a few mistakes or a little mistake at the top maybe. So, I mean, there's still time out there, but the way she attacked the bottom half of the course was really impressive. So Louise Ferguson, the next racer with the opportunity to knock Hastings out of that cozy, cozy, cozy beach chair. We got three riders left to go and the Crankworks can downhill women's elite field. Look at this, going She's for the off. single crown. She's on the trail bike and I think, I think the trail bike might, you know, be a bit, Ooh. well, look at that. Oh, she almost lost front tire there. Before I could even say it, she's put four seconds into Jenna in that section. So Louise Ferguson loving the trail bike choice right now. She's really going to be loving it at the bottom. Oh, just holding traction on that corner there. A little bit of a mistake. I think she was trying to get inside that tree, but she's still extending slightly on that lead. Just shy of a five second lead so far. Louise Ferguson. Looking to knock Jenna Hastings out of that hot seat. <laughs> Flying down the section for the jump here. Oh, that's Just coming up short. Time. That's all about how much speed she can hold down this flat finish straight. Sitting down. Still sprinting. Yeah. Oh, 10 seconds to get to the finish line. Oh, I wish we could just tell that to her right now. Look at this, you can't do it. <laughs> Oh, oh, look at that. She holds on, takes the lead by 4.4 seconds. Louise Ferguson into the hot seat. Good job. That was awesome. It looked like she was losing a bit of time on that bottom last bit. She was actually still carrying good speed. Oh, maybe that's why. She was kind of looking down and kind of sitting down and wasn't sure if she thought she might have had a flat tire, but the gears weren't changing. <laughs> She's quite happy to get down there, I think. It's got to be a great feeling to see that number one next to your name when you get to the bottom of four minutes of just sprinting and holding on through those technical seconds. Looks like she was, looked back. She, looks like she was trying to get inside that tree there, but she just hit a few roots and couldn't quite get it. She's going for the foot out there. coming into this rock drop. Really solid run for Louise. All that time lapping Skyline and Queenstown is obviously paying off, or Fort William. <laughs> right, I mean, between those two, you've uh, basically ready for any track in the world, nice, even if it's in a jungle. Yes, a nice dynamic widespread foundation of skills between those two locations. And she's continuing to climb the ladder in this sport here. So we've got two riders left at the top. We got Sean Ahern coming up next, and then of course it will be your number one qualifier, so Tracy means, Hannah. So Sean Ahern in the start gate, moments away from dropping. That means Louise is um, on the podium, guaranteed. Guaranteed bronze medal out there for Louise Ferguson. There she goes. Here we go, Sean Ahern dropping in. A couple of cranks, straight into that dusty corner. Just gotta try and keep your front wheel in the corner, not over the top. Oh, Whoa. she's great. Oh, we got a race. Sean looking solid through there. Just coming kind of inside that corner. Where's she gonna be here? Yeah, just going inside and then inside again. 
Good speed across these flat routes. With that, extending the lead by a tenth of a second. Down to the steep little drop here. More in the middle, but she still came to that corner in the right spot. A little bit short on that jump there. So much time can be gained just from clearing that jump. Save yourself by having some more momentum into this sprint. What's it gonna be? Sean Ahern, can she knock Louise Ferguson out of this hot seat? So powerful. I think she's gonna do it. Sean Ahern through the line by 4.2 seconds. Another shake up to this leaderboard with one more rider left to go. Way that to go, impressive. Sean Ahern. Just over the four minute mark. She even cut three seconds off her seating time. Which is not far off Tracy's time from seating, so. Oh, it's so cool listening to them just absolutely hurting. So good to you. That was sick though. It was fun. Like it was so fun. I saw them so much and then it was actually sweet. It is so fun listening to them recap the run right there. It's almost better than any interview we could ask for. It's just those off the cuff moments after sprinting for over four minutes. Sean Ahern into the hot seat with one racer left to drop. We got quite a decorated racer and a racer who knows this track like the back of her hand. One last rider who can take the win here. Yeah, I think Tracy is going to be, you know, she's the girl to beat here, but anything can happen, you know. That's right. One little mistake and it can be a completely different story. Tracy Hanna with 21 podiums in Crankworks Downhill in her career. She's won Whistler five in a row. She just did that in August, making it six total in the Canadian Open Downhill. And I'm sure she would love to win here on home turf. Actually grown up here in Cairns. This would mean a lot to her, I'm sure. But right now, let's celebrate this moment here for Shauna Ahern. Who knows if she's going to be able to take the win here, but she's guaranteed at least a silver medal. Yeah, I mean, she must be stoked anyway, just to to gain three seconds on a seating time, is that's really solid. Right? Especially because it's not like, you know, she took it easy on her seating run. She was still second place in seating. So to dig that much deeper and shave that much time off, so impressive. Oh no, what do we have? Tracy's got uh, issues. Oh no. Let's, <laughs> let's go to the start. <laughs> <laughs> Thank L goodness. Luckily, luckily. She's got a minute left, I think. Yeah, this is great. The stage is uh, set for a great end to this. Crankworks cans. I'm also nervous too. So. She's parked up with her Iski at the beach. Hey Luke, what's up? So just one those more party shirts are good. to go here in our elite you women's love those party downhill. shirts. It's and, the superstar. And who else could it be but the home down here? Oh, Mikey Hatterer setting the stage for this last run in the pro women's field here. The legend, Tracy Hanna. The local Cans crowd here is going to be getting very loud for her. Tracy Hanna on course. Powerful out of the start gate. Look at the split. Last rider on course and she's in the green. Oh. She's on the inside of those roots there, it looked a bit... She lost a little bit of speed Was there. she offline or was that a local little scurry? Well, we saw Sean on the inside of those roots too, but it just looked like she Tracy, lost a bit of speed. So Tracy had a little bit of time Tracy! to play with there. She was back, but she's lost some time. 0.8 right now, but still in the green. We know she's strong on this bottom section. She's high on the bank there, generating that speed. Tracy Hanna can ride this track with her eyes closed. Look at her getting good oh. backside on that. We haven't seen That's too gonna many. Help. That's gonna help her with speed down the straight. All oh, comes down staying, to fitness now. Staying low, tucking a little manual. Oh, this is gonna be good, here we go. Oh, it's gonna be so close. Oh. Tracy Hanna as the clock ticks on. What's it gonna be? She oh. does it just by a tenth of a second. Tracy Hanna takes the win. Oh, wow. <laughs> No way! That was so close. Cutting it close, considering how far ahead she was in seating. What a tight race there. Oh, oh wow. Really kept her on her toes. That was 
amazing. That was amazing. Yeah, oh, let's hear it. Look at the crowd just loving it. <laughs> Tracy Hanna, retired from World Cup downhill, of course. You know her and love her from those Red Bull TV broadcasts of the World Cup with Rob Warner. And look at this, she still knows what's up. She can still win downhill races. She did it in August in Whistler. She's done it here on home turf in Cairns. <laughs> oh, her family and friends are just right there on the front of the barrier. So happy to see her take that win, but it looked like it could have gone either way. I know, I know. Edge of our seat up here in the booth. Let's take a look back at this winning run. Yeah, right here she got some good transition on this downside. You can see she went up onto the bank on the right as left, and she got that speed and that carried her down into this corner and into that next flat section. When you can turn a steep technical section into a pump track and generate speed by putting your bike into those pockets, that's some expert veteran mountain biking right there. She was good over those jumps. It was just, oh, that was so exciting. Look, she's just going, oh, come on. Little manual through there. Putting down the ponies as the clock ticked by just enough to take the win there. <laughs> John's so stoked for her. The camaraderie is great between these women. They, isn't it just more fun to watch somebody win by a tenth of a second than, than five or six seconds? Tracy, they made you earn that one. Wow, just by a tenth of a second. Congratulations. What was that run like? Terrible, honestly. <laughs> I don't know wh what I was doing. I messed up so bad in the rock garden. There's like three lines and I took about eight, so <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. And then the big boo-boo in the bottom where you got to pedal, so whew. I knew I'd have to work for it and um, would have been a bummer to let this one go, so I'm, I don't care the time, I'm just glad I'm on the top, honestly. Absolutely, <laughs> let's talk about that. What is it like to not only have a Crankworks event here at home in Cairns, but to take the, the big W? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty important for me, so having Crankworks at home, racing for so long, and then Finally having it here, it's, I mean, in World Champs 2017 was a huge bummer, and just to have it come back and have the opportunity to win again, it's amazing, and I'm super stoked. Well, you gave us such a great show, a lot for this crowd to cheer for. Congratulations, Tracy, Hannah, Thank job you. well done. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a finish to that show. Of course, we still have the men's field to come, but let's digest these final results here for the women's elite field. It was just so close between Tracy and Sean, but man, that had us on the edge of our seats. We heard from Tracy like a big mistake in the rock garden and then also on that bottom section. So she was, what, three seconds slower than her seating time. Just a lot of boo-boos, but you know what? It, it made it a nail biter for us. Down to the wire, so entertaining. And some of those big names we see here deeper into the leaderboard, they're going to be higher up the top of the Queen of Crankworks leaderboard. It's going to be fun to add those points to their tally and see where we're sitting. Vaya was still in the lead coming into this race based on her speed and style results from last night. She had knocked Jordy out of that top spot. So it'll be cool to see what the story is there on the Queen front, but we still have the men's elite field to come here. The Crankworks cans downhill. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. Look at this, Mick. Watching the live stream of Sis making boo-boos. <laughs> oh, he's going to be so happy to see that. He looks nervous. <laughs> that's, that's pretty rad. They're hanging out at the top watching the live stream. Here's the leaderboard. Look at that. Via holds down that lead, extending 31 points ahead of Jordy Scott. Has bringing up that third place spot. Caroline Buchanan after the bronze and last night's speed and style still sitting in fourth in the She's overall. close, really close to Harriet. And Tracy rounding out the top five, the queen of crankwork standings. More events to come here at Crankworks Cans for the women. We still have pump track and dual slalom throughout the weekend. But big celebration here as the crowd digests the big win from Tracy Hanna grabbing that gold medal. And like we just said, she had to earn that. You know, a few mistakes, six seconds ahead in seating, but it came down to a tenth of a second. And wow, what a feeling. Yeah, to, to do that in front of her home crowd, her family and friends, to, do, to win is one thing, but to do it in front of, you know, the, your mates and 
your people. That's amazing. Just extra pressure when you're doing it at home, right? She said, we asked her what it was like. She said, well, it means a lot. More champagne to come here today, Friday local time at Crankworks Cans, day two of broadcast competition. We just had a great final for the women's downhill race and now we're gearing up to drop the men. It's going to be a good one as the crowd repositions, finding that best place to watch the action out here in the jungle, the wet tropics rainforest, northeastern tip of Australia. What an amazing spot we have. Two World Heritage sites. We're sandwiched in between both of them. We got the Great Barrier Reef. Come on, well, the Great Barrier Reef. Everybody around the world knows about the Great Barrier Reef. You can see it from the top of the downhill course. You can see it from space. And we're gearing up to watch the men take to this course. A lot of big names on the list. Who's standing out for you? I think it's pretty hard to look past Troy. And then, yeah, also Sam Blinky. So he didn't really have a good run yesterday when I was talking to him earlier. So I think he's going to be one to watch too. Yeah, you know what, so many riders enjoying their time here in Cairns, and they're making the most of it. They're showing up early, they're staying late. Let's take a look at how some of our riders are spending their downtime here in Cairns, Australia. This is snorkeling on dirt. Not so fun. But this, this is snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef. We're about to go to the Great Barrier Reef and I am very excited and I'm even more excited for everyone from out of state and international to come and see what Cairns has to offer. Experiencing something completely different and new, it's not what we usually get to do at a mountain bike race, so it's uh, pretty lucky that we're here. The reef is just like so beautiful, so yeah, it was, it was pretty unreal. No dull moments out here at Crankworks Cans. It's great to see the riders just enjoying their time off of the downhill course, but we're about ready to heat things up with the men's field right now. Let's take a look at this start list, Charlie. Yeah, no, I think we're gonna have a really good race on this afternoon. Oh. We're starting with our man, Alan Cook. He was in the booth with us yesterday for the Speed and Style. Look at that. Alan has always wanted to crack into the top 20 in seating to make it to the big show here. Alan will be joining me up in the booth to call the Slope Style competition tomorrow, but he will be the first rider we see drop for the men. Yeah, no, it's going to be good. And then um, yeah, we've got some big names coming through here. I know Jake Newell, he's a, a local Australian boy, and he was on a trail bike yesterday and had a crash in 10th place. So he's actually one to watch for this afternoon. We got Bass Van Steenberg, and we just saw him snorkeling on the Great Barrier Reef. We'll see him in the jung jungle here momentarily, and then we finish it up with the fastest four from seating. Take a look. Yeah, that's a solid lineup there. I mean, yeah, we've seen these guys on the podium and that and that some of the other events this year. And like I said, yeah, Blinky is one to watch, and Troy and also Connor on the flat pedals is going to be interesting too. So we usually catch up with our analyst, Alan Cook, to talk about the courses, but here he's actually one of the competitors. And so we asked him, you know, all the fine details that goes into choosing lines and racing this Crankworks Cans downhill course. Let's have a listen. Yeah, so this track's pretty unique. It like kind of sneaks up on you during track walk. It looks pretty mellow and you're not really thinking too much about it. Like, oh, it's straightforward. But when you ride it, you really, when you do a top to bottom, you realize how diverse the track really is. The top is super tight rutted turns you got to be super precise to keep your speed up and then you're like star wars speeder bike going 100 miles an hour through the jungle and then straight back into some like flowy stuff where a rider that can really maintain and, and keep his speed going is going to pay off huge and then it's a full-on like death sprint to the bottom empty your tank everything you got you're cross-eyed by then so there's nothing really to worry about you just put your head down and pedal well it's always fun having alan cook up here in the booth kind of 
analyzing the action, but yeah, he's, he's uh, putting on a different hat in the form of a full face helmet today. A guy who wears a lot of hats. It's crazy you think about all the things that guy has done in his career. Any BMX fans will recognize his name. One of the biggest and most successful freestyle BMX riders, you know, back in the, the 90s and the early 2000s. And uh, he fell in love with mountain biking. Now he works marketing with Specialized and uh, he is fast, man. I've ridden with him a ton. I know you have as well. Yeah, and he had a podium in the whip-off in Crankworth's Whistler. Yeah, he's, he's so, won it before, too. Yeah, yeah, he's won it before, so he does everything. It's, it's impressive, and yeah, it's really cool having his insights up here. But having that on track, and I'm excited to see him come down, actually. He's on the full downhill bike, but some of the other riders have opted for different bikes, trail bikes or enduro bikes, or like a trail bike with a, a downhill fork. Like we see Mick Hanna's on the, the SB165, so it's like a trail bike, but it's a mullet with a downhill fork on the front. Are they lowering the, the forks just to accommodate the lower travel in the rear or what? Yeah, some of them are. Like, um, yeah, Mick has, and also Troy has gone down from a 200 mil fork to a 180 mil fork. So like I think you said, yeah, a lot of mixed wheel setups out here too, right? Yeah, I think the mullet helps with the turning as well when we have quite a few tight turns at the top of this course, and the mullet, the back wheel, has a different turning radius than the front wheel, which makes sense because when you're turning, your front wheel has to go further around the corner. So I think in those tight turns, it really helps having the mullet set up. Well, you're coming off the win, big win at the Trophy Nations. I know you're going to be rocking some stripes on your jersey next year, so congratulations on that. So you know how to analyze a, a racetrack and, you know, choose lines, set up your bike. What would you ride ideally? What do you think you would choose for this racetrack if you were competing? I think something like Mick or Troy is pretty good, like an enduro bike, but a bit more beefy, kind of a hybrid between a downhill and an enduro. So look at the King of Crankwork standings right now. Now bear in mind this is most likely gonna change here. It could change, considering that Thomas Lemoyne, who's leading the charge, the number one next to his name, is not competing in the downhill race. Bass Van Steenbergen is. So it's gonna be interesting to see. You know, that's the that's the behind the scenes story when you watch a rider like Bass Van Steenbergen take into this course. Because you know, if he doesn't get on the podium, that is not a loss. It's the big picture, the overall series hunt for that that king's crown and in the case of Bass Van Steenbergen he's looking up to, to maintain that crown you know he's the reigning champ from last year's season so today could could be really important for him on his quest to, to double up yeah definitely I mean um, Lemoyne's not on the event today so it's a perfect opportunity to try and nab some points while he's not not competing and uh, a little bit of pressure for Bass Van Steenbergen as well because although Thomas Lemoyne isn't in the event today. He may compete in every single event we have left for the rest of the weekend. He's definitely going to be in slope style tomorrow. He said he may compete in pump track and he may compete in slalom. So that's gonna be fun to watch, but I'm looking forward to this as well. Looks like we're about ready to start the action here in the men's pro field, the Crankworks Cans downhill. We're gonna kick things off with our teammate here, Alan Cook on course. He goes ripping into that first corner. Yeah, we were talking to him after seating. He said, well, I made some mistakes, but I also really greased some sections. So look at that, a little back here. <laughs> a little bit back. He's got, oh, he's lost, he's had a crash. He's lost his visor. He's got it in his, tucked into his pants, I think. That will explain the 16 second deficit here. He's still all right, he's still going. Looks like he managed to, you know, he lost a visor, but it looks like his bike's working, his body's working, so that's great to see. I mean, he's, he's actually still holding the same time. He lost 16 seconds, but he didn't lose any more in that next section. Ripping. He's so fun to watch ride. So you can see his visor hanging out of his pants. <laughs> he's going to be quite good. He's going to be aerodynamic for this last bit anyway. One thing about Alan is, like, he really goes for it. So even if he's just on a casual <laughs> ride at home, he says he rides 90% every time he hops on a bike, and sometimes that leads to you losing your visor. <laughs> yeah, he's probably going, you know, over 100% in this run, I think. <laughs> yeah, looks sure. Like yeah, Alan Cook, way to go. Obviously, a there's a story today. from the top of that run. But great to see him make it down yeah, in one piece. <laughs> he even spent the time to grab the visor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear what he says. Exit. Uh, the, the play turn? Nah. Like, you know how to exit? You could... Alan is just trying to look like the slope style Nikolai <laughs> I was waiting for that reference. Nikolai Rogatkin's like, what do you mean he had a crash? 
I want to hear what happened. So Alan will give you a second. Looks happy. Brad, we saw you go a bit Nikolai Rogakin style with the visor, but uh, it doesn't look intentional. Missing some uh, some material there. <laughs> what happened? I uh, just went inside trying to exit the rock garden. Sounds like it's crashing the rock garden up there. So Darcy Couts dodging a bullet there, holding it down in the hot seat. Back to the top now. These guys will be feeling pretty nervous doing their warm ups and taking a few deep breaths, getting ready, trying to calm the mind. You yeah, see Dylan. Bass in the back there. There's Blinky as well. Got the whole top 20 there for the men's field gearing up. I think the next rider we'll have on course is Dylan Crane. Also from the States, a rider we've definitely seen competing a handful of different events on the season so far. Yeah, so he was doing speed and style. Yeah, um, he usually does. Yeah, yesterday, and he's riding for propane, I think. So let's see what Dylan Crane can do right here. Solid start. Gap in those roots, just like Alan. Looks like he's lost a minute. He must have had it. Must have also had an issue. I mean, look, he's missing his visor. Is he as well. What's going on? Has he also got his visor in his pocket? Like, if only he would know how funny this is. Like the same exact story here. He's got his visor in his back pocket too. I think. Let's see. I thought there was something in his pants there. <laughs> well, unfortunately, issues for. Oh, maybe not. First two of our top 20 in the men's field. Oh, suicide! Oh, no, I was gonna say Dylan usually. Pulls out some exciting little bits. He'll flip and pump track. So he's putting on a show there. Oh, yeah, Suicide no-hander. <laughs> so good show there from Dylan Crane, but obviously not going to threaten the hot seat there. Darcy Couts can get a little bit cozy for a couple minutes at least. All right, here we go, Brady Stone. Yes. So his bike was lost on the airplane. And it's just shown up, I think, last night. So he did practice on a borrowed bike. He's pumping down here. Oh, three yep. seconds in the green. 3.1 seconds up here. Brady Stone putting down a great run so far. Oh, he's looking smooth through there. I love how he snuck into that transition. Just getting over that step up there. He's an enduro rider, so he's fit. He can pedal. His arms can hold on for, you know, 10 minutes, so this shouldn't be a problem for him. So Darcy Couch so looking 10 seconds from the hot seat. 10 seconds to get to the line. Oh, I think Brady's going to do it. Take yeah. a look at this sprint. He looks strong. He does Four it. Four seconds. Way to go. Oh. Brady Stone, the Kiwi, moving into the hot seat. So yeah, having your own bike obviously helps. So I think he did seating and practice yesterday on a borrowed downhill bike, and then his bike came, which is an enduro bike. Whenever there's a story like that, it's always interesting too, right? Because you go, well, how much of a reflection is seating if there's issues like that going on? Look, yeah. watch him sneak into this transition. Look I love that. You got high on the bank there. Yeah, the higher you go, the more you have to pump. He's carrying such good speed, and I know he was very happy to have that enduro bike instead of the downhill bike. He looked happy in that final sprint. Back up to the top. The Aussie, Will Hines. Let's see if he can threaten that time from Brady Stone. Hines on course. So he also does some enduro as well. So he's, uh, I expect to see him pretty strong on the pedals. The young fellow from Brisbane. Ooh, it's gonna be close. He's green. Oh, he's put out. Only by three quarters of a second, though, so it's still. Will he have held that, held that speed, or has he lost a bit with the foot out? About, oh, about oh, to find out. Nails the inside line to the trees there. He's got some buddies in that section. Oh, there. Come on, Will. He's lost a bit. 0.3 now. 0.39. Yeah. Oh! No way. Wow. <laughs> the Bubba scrub into the tech bit. Oh, I can't wait to see a replay of that. That was, that was very loose. Oh, he's so aggressive. He's just fully scrubbing off that drop and his, his wheel washed out on him. 
And to think right now, he's essentially competing against an enduro bike right now. Zone in the hot seat. He's got three seconds. I don't know if he's quite going to get there. Mm, I don't know. Hines grinding. One oh, second. Lost a second. Wow. I mean, there's definitely some indications we saw on screen there that he was losing time. But man, it did make for a good show. That scrub into view of the camera. We saw a little replay of that in the bottom left of the screen. And that was impressive. But I do think it resulted in losing some time. I think if he had, hadn't had those two little bobbles, he might have. Here we go, here's the scrub. Look at that! Boom! Both wheels just drew. He did so well to save that. I'm a sucker for a moment like that. <laughs> That's why I like watching downhill racing right that, there. That but it caused him not to connect to the transition right there. He landed a bit on the deck of that yeah. bank. I think without that, though, you know, that could easily be a second there. Well, way to go holding on to that as well. Like, just the... Yeah. composure to keep the eyes up where you want to be and not get hung up by the fact that you know your bike's out of control your mind better stay in control too right yeah, he's just literally going sideways at 30 k's an hour cooper downey out of the start gate another aussie just two seconds back Ripping down here. Cooper's been working hard to set up um, a coaching coaching facility for riders oh, and young guys to help grow the sport here in Australia, which oh, is really way cool. to go. It's joyride coaching, I think, down in Melbourne. Oh, Looking oh, solid through there. How aggressive. Do you think you can pull back that time? Three seconds back of the last split. I don't know. We're talking about because Brady was stone so fast here too, wasn't he? Yeah, Brady Stone on the enduro bike. You know, the fact that he was on a borrowed bike during seating, he might be sitting in that hot seat for a bit. So where will Cooper find himself into third place? Decent run. Decent run for Cooper. Looks like Brady took about five seconds off his seating run in the end. Man. So oh, the joys of being oh, on your own bike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, here we go. Joyride MTB coaching. So that's he's been working very hard to set that up. And it's such a good thing having a facility for you know the, the youth to be able to progress. How great is that? Without people taking it upon themselves, you know, it's it's hard for kids to figure out what those steps are. So I'm sure it's gonna have a big impact on his community. As we take a peek up at the top, Baxter Maywald getting ready to drop in. Does he have what it takes to knock Brady Stone out of that hot seat? Another Aussie, expect to hear the crowd yeah. get loud. From, from Tassie, he uh, works trail building down there. So he knows what it's like to build a good trail and I'm sure he can ride it as well. Whoa! Absolutely. Yep. 3.8 in the lead. Put out on that corner, just push it off those roots. He looks so casual, doesn't he? Yeah. He's going inside here. Oh, he's got a, he's got a flat tire. Oh, come on. Boy, oh, boy. I think he might have a flat tire. That might be why he's looking so casual. Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. He's lost. It looks like his rear tire's flat there. Probably got an insert. That's why he's able to still kind of carry oh. on. Yeah, that's flat. He even hits the camera with his rear wheel. Oh, oh. oh. drifting. Well, this is going to be fun to watch at least. <laughs> As the time leaks away quicker than the air from that back tire. Bomber for Baxter Maywald. Oh, he was going so well. Yeah, it's completely flat now, isn't it? Yeah. Ah, oh, bummer, he was on a real good one. I think it was 3.8 ahead Yeah, that first split. Yeah. It could have been real good. Well, Brady Stone. Yeah, he's holding on to it. Holding on. <laughs> Oh, it's tough. He's going to look back at that run and think, you know, what if? Totally. But that's racing. An absolute gentleman of the sport, Baxter Maywald. Really yeah, awesome. what are you going to do, right? Baxter Maywald. Great performance at the top of the course, though. I think up next we're going to have the Chilean rider. <laughs> I think we got uh, the Frenchman, Gautier Jones. Oh, sorry, yeah, the Frenchman first. I know he's been, um, been racing on the World Cup. So 
we're going to have a lot of experience coming into this race. Yeah, for sure. Great to see the international field out here. Obviously, a ton of Aussies, a ton of Kiwis. And here we go, representing France. It's going to be Gautier Jung. All right, what will the story be here? Jung on course. Oh, big gap into that section. Yeah, 1.1 in the green. Just getting over that rudy corner there. Such an awkward left-hander there. Yeah, we've seen two different approaches, the outside or the foot off inside. Sneaks through that inside there. It's peddling. Oh, he's in touch, three quarters of a second back. He's lost almost two seconds in that between those two splits though. Could have had a mistake. I wonder if he's getting tired or if he's got a slow puncture or something. And when we see somebody leaking time before that final sprint and they're on a downhill bike, considering our hot seat run was from a trail bike, you go, oh, it's gonna be tough. He's got 10 seconds to get to the line. Don't know if he's gonna quite make it. I think we're going oh, to see close, Stone here dodge another bullet, but it is going to be really close. Oh, just. Uh, not quite enough. Back into second place only by four tenths of a second. So a great ride there, but probably some issues off camera, huh? We saw him leak some time between splits. Yeah, he must have had a mistake between those two splits, I think, to lose two seconds, but still a really solid run. He hung on to it, didn't give up, kept pushing all the way to the finish. Brady gets to keep that hot seat for a bit longer. What's the time? What's the time? 3.43. So he's still improved on his seating time. So we're looking at Brady's run again. It was pretty, pretty much flawless, well, from what we saw anyway, and he's carrying such good speed on that Enduro bike. I mean, the Enduro bike is looking like a great choice at this point in the game. When we see them, Hit that flat section at the bottom, it really comes in handy. You can see his power is kind of going more forward rather than down bikes going up and down a lot. So back to live action here. This will be Raimundo Guzman from Chile. Here's our Chilean rider. I knew he was coming. He's on the Banshee bike, I think. Yeah, good speed Ooh, across yeah. those flat routes. Just about 0.3 ahead right now, Guzman. Into this drop. Looking smooth. Yeah, oh, he can do it. He's pumping everywhere he can. Get the transition. Yeah, easily over the step up. He's looking fit, but man, Stone was on that trail bike. He's, he doesn't stop pedaling at all. No, no, he's. Charging, oh, oh, four seconds left to, left across the line. Oh, I think he's gonna oh, do it, yes. yes. Just by .78, Guzman into the hot seat. Oh, awesome, what a ride. Thanks. Chilean rider making the quest to Australia, putting down a great run. <laughs> In a good piddling technique, you can see his body was quite still, but his legs were just pumping up and down. Yeah, efficient pedaling paying off there for Guzman. Oh. You got your hot seat, buddy. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to it. Yeah, I got this. Straight to the hot seat. Take your seat, bud. <laughs> so, Re Raymond, Raimundo Guzman goes into the hot seat. We got Tim Eaton, the Aussie, looking to answer back. Running on the Forbidden. He's also another uh, mountain bike coach. Look at this, a huge lead at split number one. Over three and a half seconds for Tim Eaton. Oh, he must have done something really impressive in the top half, of course. Just sneaking inside that tray. There we go, holding on. Pretty similar split here in split number two. I mean, he's gonna do it as long as he's able to hold on. No mistakes here toward the bottom. Just comes Pumping. down to this last sprint. Oh, losing a little bit of speed there, not connecting to that transition. Making up for it with some scrubs. Going for it. 
Tim Eaton in his home country here, looking to give the crowd something to cheer for. Oh, looks like he's gonna, I think he's gonna do it. Absolutely, the question is by how much? 3.7 into the lead. Australia's Tim Eaton does it. That was a solid run. That was a short-lived little hangout there for Guzman. Yeah, he's gonna leave that nice little um, beach, beach park up behind. All right, there we go. Bass Van Steenbergen spinning the legs, warming up the top of the course. He's obviously thinking about putting down the fastest run he can, but he's thinking about all the results he's had so far this year and the points he was able to earn. He grabbed the bronze medal, the dual slalom in Whistler just a couple months ago, and then second, the pump track challenge in Innsbruck at the beginning of the season. That's how he started out earning points, and that's why we see him at the top of the leaderboard for the king of Crankworks overall standings. Another opportunity to grab some points here. He's gonna wanna grab some points because you know Thomas Lemoyne is biting at his heels. Actually, Thomas Lemoyne, you know, deciding to take more events at this stop just because he's having such a great battle here with Bass Van Steenbergen, the 28-year-old out of Kelowna, BC, flying the Maple Leaf flag here in Australia. Bass Van Steenbergen on course. He knows how to do a gate start, that's for sure. He's got a gate at home, practices yeah. diligently. There we go, 2.2 back. But keep in mind, the big story here is where he finishes on that leaderboard. The amount of points he can, can take into that king of Crankworks overall. Oh my God! He's on downhill a lot the last two seasons. Yeah. Yeah, I was speaking to him uh, earlier today and he said he's actually got a, a mountain bike uh, specific coach, which has been really helping him with the downhill and stuff like that. But he's thinking some more BMX stuff would be good for, you know, pump track. For sure. Whoa, look at that trademark Bass Van Steenberg and style over these jumps. Oh, he's got power, doesn't he? He's just sprinting. pushing. He knows how to squash a jump. Flying towards the line. So not going to take over the lead, quite, but where but will he be? Look at that, into second place. That is great. With 10 riders left to go, Bass Van Steenbergen moves into second place. He's done his job today. Redefining, sucking in the deep ones there. Yeah, that he has well, Tim, congratulations on that run. You're hanging out in the hot seat right now, getting cozy. Talk yeah. me through your run. Uh, yeah, it was, I was a bit worried about that rain we had earlier. I wasn't sure how slippery things were going to be, but as you come into the rock garden, you can just see the big wed, wet wedge rock, and you just sort of jump in and hope that you're going to stay in line. So uh, got a bit sketchy, but managed to put it together, and pretty solid run, but I think I could have had more, but we'll see how we go. Yeah, and I've got one question. Um, that bottom pedal, that sprint at the end, how hard is that after doing a full run on the limit? It's, it sucks. It's so <laughs> hard. It's it just, you think you're done, but you still got so far to go. And uh, yeah, you just got to put your head down and chew on your stem until you get to the finish and hope you don't lose too much time. Well, yeah. Nice work there, Tim. Embracing the pain and uh, you know putting the sprint down when it counts. You're sitting in the hot seat right now. We got ten more riders to go. Good run. Cheers, mate. Thank you. There we go. Look at our leaderboard right now, Charlie. Yeah, Tim's got a good buffer actually over Bass. He's on a 3:38, and our fastest qualifier was a 3:28. Yes. <laughs> so that's you know 10 seconds to catch up to Troy, so it's gonna be interesting seeing this top 10 come down. Tim talking about a little bit of the impact that downpour had on, on the track right now. Yeah, I think especially, it tends to rain a little bit more on the upper mountain than the lower mountain. Just as the clouds come over, they drop a bit of moisture, and I know that those rocks get absolutely icy when they get wet.
welcome back here. Crankworks Cans Downhill Live broadcast from the wet tropics rainforest here in beautiful Cans, Australia. We got 10 more riders left to go in our pro men's field. And we're gonna finish it off with the fastest riders from the seating run. Three fastest riders, Aussies. And uh, let's take a look at the list of who we have left to drop. So we're starting out with Jake Newell on the trail bike. And as I said, he had a crash yesterday, so I think we'll see how much he can improve on that seating run if he has a clean run. And then we've got Joel Sutherland, Thomas Locke, and then the top four that really look, you know, these are impressive riders. These are World Cup specialists. Some big names to finish off this race. Right now we got Tim Eaton hanging out in the hot seat, putting down a great run with the time of 3.38. But like you mentioned, that fastest seating run from Troy Brazen. 10 seconds faster than our current leading time right now. So this is far from over. And uh, you know, one thing you always associate with Cairns Australia is the legend Mick Hanna. It's gonna gr be great to see him take to this course. We just saw sister Tracy Hanna take the win. I gotta imagine the crowd's gonna be getting very loud for our, our third to last rider to drop Mick Hanna. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, Mick, he grew up just down the road and he's done so well here in, in the past, you know, in the World Cups and the World Champs that have been here. So, and he's on that, you know, enduro bike. So it's really gonna be good to see him come down and we know how powerful he is. And he's fit as well. He's been doing enduro all season. So he's gonna be pushing it. Look at this, back in the day, a little throwback to Mick's, Mick's uh, first Crankworks downhill podium. That was pretty cool back in 2012. And if you think back to his career, I remember when he burst onto the scene by beating Brian Lopes in the Sea Otter Dual Slalom. That had to have been like, man, early 2000s. And he was the youngster back then. Now he's the veteran with such a storied career. And uh, like you say, he's riding for Yeti this year. So he's riding that trail bike and uh, setting it up pretty unique for this course here. Way different than how he had it set up for Innsbruck. Yeah, and Innsbruck had a single crown fork and he's actually gone for the double crown downhill fork. But he's um, lowered the travel to 180 mil and he's running a mullet setup. So this is the first time he's actually run a mullet setup on this bike. He's got the uh, 29 inch front wheel and the 27 and a half inch rear wheel. And yeah, he's, he's just really enjoying it and it's working out well on these corners. It's, you know, cornering, having lots of traction, lots of grip and getting through all the difficult sections. Yeah, Mick retiring at the end of last season from World Cup downhill, but he's been hitting the E Enduro series really hard. Yeah, he has. He's been, they've been developing a new engine with Shimano and with Yeti. And yeah, he's just so fit and strong. You see him out there all day doing these six, eight hours, eight hour days on the bike. So we know he's fit, we know he's strong, and he's gonna really attack this course this afternoon. It was so rad watching his last World Cup race last year. And uh, you know, that was emotional, his family out there. And you know, he's been doing it for so long. He's such a crowd favorite. And so you go through that and you go, oh man, no more Mick on World Cup. But you know, it's, it's, it's just, he's just switching gears. So you see just as much of Mick Hanna this year as you're used to seeing from him. He's just deciding to ride different races. He's still, uh, yeah, a bit more prevalent at this race than some other races, just because the course has these flat bits. It's got some bits you need to pedal and pump a lot. So yeah, Jake here's on the, the Norco Enduro bike, and he's also an EWS racer. He's done, you know, he did really well in Whistler. He's in the top 20 there. And he's on a full 29er, but he's got a bit shorter travel and it's a bit, he can pump it up, make it a bit stiffer so we can just carry speed and pump through it. So one of the riders everybody was so excited to see on the start list for downhill out here was Sam Hill. Unfortunately, Sam had an issue. Sam, man, explain to me what happened yesterday in practice. Uh, yeah, I was feeling good yesterday. Um, had, a, had a few decent runs and I was just doing one of my last race or last practice runs before seeding and um, a tree vine grabbed my front brake lever and just locked it up and spat me into a tree. So it's kind of, yeah, pretty devastated on it. Man, that's a bummer. That's how it goes sometimes. I know you've, you've seen it all when it comes to race and mountain bikes, but everybody was so excited to see you on the start list for a downhill. Do you want to you wanna race some downhills in the future after you get healthy? Yeah, definitely. It's um, kind, kind of the plan um, at the moment. It's just trying to build some speed and some comfort on the downhill bike. So... Yeah, sort of two, two days into to being back on the downhill bike and now I've got a bit of a pause on things until I get healthy again, but we'll be back. Yeah, what did you end up hurting? Um, I dislocated my shoulder and fractured some of the socket and um, I've got a couple of fractures in my spine, so um, yeah, got, got some more scans and MRIs and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move forward when the surgeon knows more. 
Man, considering all that, it's amazing to have you out here cheering on your friends. Obviously, it's a bummer we're not going to get to see you ride, but you've been through it all in so many different disciplines in this sport. I'm sure you're going to come back just as strong as ever. Thanks for uh, joining us, Sam. No worries. Thank you. Look forward to seeing these top boys come down the hill. Absolutely. It's going to be so good. Cheers, Sam. Man, that guy puts the capital L in legend. I know. I was really looking forward to seeing him back on the downhill bike. And <sighs> I mean, it's so cool to hear that he's still motivated and he's going yeah. you know, to be back. So that's something exciting to look forward to, but it's a real shame not seeing him here this afternoon. 37 years old, definitely changed the sport of World Cup downhill racing. And, uh, you know, two world championship titles. And then he's transitioned to enduro and just like, I mean. Yeah, three enduro world titles, so. Insane. Oh. <laughs> and just the idea of seeing him take to a downhill course, everybody was buzzing, yeah. you know. And so to see that news, on Instagram this morning that he had an injury. We'll all be rooting for him to make a quick recovery and uh, really excited hearing him hint at what his plans may be for the 2023 season. Yeah, no, I think it's gonna be cool. Everyone wants to see him back on the downhill bike and he's got those textbooks, Sam Hill, you know, flat corners, the drifts, the foot out. It's just exciting yeah, riding to watch, isn't it? It would be fun just for like a little novelty to have him suit up for a race on the old Iron Horse Sunday wearing full Troy Lee gear <laughs> just for old time's sake. Yeah. Yeah, I know Sunday and Sam Hill go together like peas in a pod. Just those those line choices that he he opened up everybody's mind about you know where you could go in a corner and how you could still take an inside line and have good exit speed. So ten more riders left to drop here. Crankworks cans downhill pro men's field. Looks like it's going to be Jake Newell, the next rider we'll see on course. But the last rider we will see drop is the fastest qualifier from seeding runs yesterday, Troy Brosnan. We caught up with him earlier. Here's what he had to say. Coming off like winning Crankworks Whistler in the Canadian Open, obviously I'd love to come here and, and get another win. Um, it's definitely going to be tough. Obviously there's like local Mick Hanna. Just getting a win would be amazing and any time on top of that would be an absolute bonus for sure. Man, he has such stellar technique you know he's, he's not the he's not the biggest guy out there you know but he has so much precision with his riding he can find speed on any course and uh man we we're just talking about an impressive career you know guys like mick Hanna and sam hill but you know just the australians are so present on the world cup scene and and such an impact they've had on the sport it's gonna be great to watch troy take to this course and see if he can back up that number one seating run yeah, yesterday in the seating, he was, I saw some videos on Instagram, he was just looking comfortable. Like you said, precise, no, wasn't even a chance of a mistake, it was just textbook right now. Hey, man. <laughs> the crowd loving it out here in Cairns. Boys throwing up the shutters. This is what I'm talking about. We got the youngsters out here feeling the Crankworks energy. They've had some Red Bulls. <laughs> They've got the speed dealers on. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful place to hang out here near the Daintree Rainforest, part of the longest continuously surviving rainforest on the planet. And then, of course, the Great Barrier Reef. And Crankworks cans. There we go. Jake on course, Newell. Jake Newell. This will be fun, another trail bike on oh, course, 2.8 in the green. He's flying. Aggressive, too. Oh, he just hops over those roots. We haven't seen the line executed like that over that tight left-hander. Gonna get on the inside here like we saw on his helmet cam at the start of the show. Smoking along this flat section. Oh, yeah. Just lost a little bit of time, but he's still got a good buffer. Let's see if he can make it up at the bottom, oh. putting that trail bike to use. Hooking down here. It's got that low speed tuck already, popping that step up, just oh. catches downside. Jigs new on, on a pedals. good run, he can do it. He's cranking hard. Time to beat a 338, 10 seconds to go here for Newell. Oh, it's gonna be so close. So close. I think, I think he might be good. Yes. There it is, two seconds. Jake Newell slides into the hot seat by over two seconds, knocking Tim Eaton out. So he's six seconds up on his uh, seating run. No way. 
that was that was pretty much perfect, smooth, powerful. Oh, oh, dude, that's that fucking noise. <laughs> oh, what's he done there? He's lost his chain guy? Yeah, nice one. What is it? Let's get, we're getting right in there trying to figure out what's going on with that drivetrain. Sure didn't seem to affect him too much. Fastest time of the day goes to Jake Newell. One Aussie leaves the hot seat as another slides in. We've seen quite a few enduro bikes in the hot seat. Brady and Jake have both, both got themselves in there, so you know, on any bike you're gonna be able to get down here in good in a good time by the looks of it. It's funny, right? It's like you just balance out the strengths for the weaknesses depending on what bike you're on. We see a downhill bike dropping in right now. That's going to be Joel Sutherland. Another Australian. Oh, back at split number one by 2.7. You can hear he's got some uh, fans and supporters on the side that there. Joel A. Just holding the inside. Oh, he's right out on the, on the side of the course here. That was a cool line. He's pulling it back a little bit. Yeah, he's got all kinds of friends out there. Yeah. <laughs> he's flying through that bit there. This crowd loves themselves some Joel Sutherland. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's going absolutely ham for the finish line. Bring it on. Joel Sutherland hoping to crack into that top three right now. It's not going to be fast enough for the lead, but look, he's not going to be too far off. There we Third. go. Third place for Joel Sutherland with eight riders left to go. He was a little like a really aggressive sprint. Oh, he was going for it. So Jake's getting a bit more comfortable in that hot seat now. Jake Newell holding it down. back at this run right here. He was back at split number one. He pulled some time. Oh, he's just keeping the back wheel down coming off that second drop. But so strong in the sprint. We're gonna see oh, that just, momentarily. You wow. saw him just inside on the corner yeah. there a little bit. After but, that interview with but, Sam Hill, you heard he got inspired. Like you said, this was impressive though. He's just, look at his whole Ooh. body is trying to get that bike to go forward. Got the enduro lid on, a bit more ventilation in the tropical rainforest. And there's our hot seat, Jake Newell, horns up, he's looking happy. This reminds me of like the uh, Snoop Dogg Corona commercial right now. <laughs> I'm interested to know what, what he had wrong with his bike there. Whether it was a stick I know, what was, was he talking about? Yeah. Or, Sure didn't seem to affect his time too much, but there was something going on at that drivetrain. We have eight riders left to go. Thomas Locke gearing up in the start gate. So our current leader, Jake Newell, here's how he did it. He was pretty composed and just carrying good speed, keeping low, trying to stay out of the wind. It's interesting, right? You see some riders just charging so hard on that sprint and a lot of body English. Yeah. But it's so much faster when you see those riders who still have some energy in the tank and the upper body's quiet, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I don't think moving the head helps. <laughs> you don't pedal with your head, do you? <laughs> no, but yeah, it looks good. It does. Yeah, we love to see him. Leaving it all out there on the table. Downhill, such a wild discipline. Formula, Formula One of mountain bike racing. All oh, comes down to one run. Thomas Locke, next rider. Oh, we're just hearing right now, Thomas Locke had an issue in his run. Sounds like he's going to pull off course. We will not see him, that will be a DNF. 
Looks like that will bring up Jackson Frew. Yeah, we saw Jackson in the um, in the speeding style yesterday. Jackson Frew loves putting on a good show, and uh, yeah, it was fun watching him compete against some of those trick machines. And yeah, he made it quite far. Yeah, he definitely had the speed aspect dialed. Made it into the round of eight. It's two seconds up on Jake here, so we're just going to see if he gets that inside line. Yeah, yeah dials that in. Oh, well, things are looking good here for Jackson Frew. Oh, he's extending. Oh, 2.9. Almost three seconds up. Coming up. Oh, yes. he's just scrubbing oh, my. Oh. Okay, that was the best we've seen so far through that section. He's just scrubbing over that drop and then pulling off the second part of it. Oh, E.T. Yeah, he's got plenty of gas in the tank. He's got that nice still here, just the legs pumping. Time to beat a 3.36. Oh, he's going to do it. Oh, big time. Jackson Frew will go into the lead by oh. 4.3. Wow. Jackson Frew grabs the hot seat. Cam, the times are tumbling. He's, he's also taken five seconds off his seat. Man. We're seeing so many riders take five and six seconds off of their seating runs. And the course, I think, is probably the, it's probably the same conditions, or maybe even a bit more rough, a bit blown out, and maybe we heard it was slippery in that rock garden as well, so not yeah, I mean, necessarily easy. It's seen a lot of traffic since seeding yesterday, but look at that. Oh, he that popped was, so early, oh, too. He catches that downside, the second downside. Yep. It's the first person we've seen to do that. Basically tripled it. Yeah, he had that scrub off of that top section oh, there, that? left hander over oh, the rock, and then popped, oh. tripled it. That was, that was a sick, sick run to that section there. Jackson Frew holding it down. Kaya Hearn, we just saw Sis kill it for the women's pro category. And now Kaya Hearn on course. It's the first corner to die out. He's just, let's have a look at the split time. We're getting into the big names. So he's on the same team as, team as Tracy Hanna. Oh, oh, 2.9 back. He's got a lot of work to do in this bottom section. And he also goes for the pull. Pumping down there to get over the step up. Perfect. Let's go for the speed tuck. Yeah, unless he's going to pull a rabbit out of his helmet here. I think Jackson Frew is going to be safe. It's yeah, time's watch. slipping away there. So Kaya Hearn slides into second place. Crazy, right? Two and a half seconds back is still good enough for second. For such a relatively short track, we're seeing some big gaps. Sounds like has he, has he hurt himself more. Didn't sound too happy at the bottom there. Huh. It looks sore. Yeah. That's fucked up. Oh my god. <laughs> he throws the hang loose though. <laughs> well, he's recovering now. Yeah. But whatever it was, he was uh, he was hurting at the he bottom. He emptied the tank, man. Josh Button spinning the legs at the top of the course. Five riders left to go. So we did a 3.34, so his seating was just a little bit slower than our fastest time. But it's just this run that counts, oh, and he's 2.3 oh, yeah. up. Man, these gaps. He's not even at the finish, and he's got 2.3 seconds. It's amazing. He's got that inside line dialed. Inside, inside. So he's just kind of holding that, yes. that buffer there. Consistent. Coming into that rock drop. Keeping it low and fast. Inside on the corner. Josh Barton so far so good. Oh, this could shake things up here. He's got 15 seconds to get to the line. 
Can he do it? 10 seconds now from that double. <laughs> Still far away, but it looks like he's going to do it. Oh, Josh Button through the line in first place, putting 1.7 into the oh. roof. Yeah, Josh Button. That was, that was impressive. He was so solid on that bottom section. How much time did he take out of the seating run? Four seconds out of the seating run. Wow. So if we keep going like this, we're going to have a pretty fast time. All right. What is uh, Troy going to turn that? 328 into. Yeah, that's the question. They're coming just scrubbing off that drop. It's awesome. But he stayed low for that bit. Really consistent through that, right? No but risks, but here going he's on the inside. inside. Love it. So next, I guess we got, do we have Blinky? Yeah. <laughs> We're into the final four riders to drop here in our Crankworks Cans Downhill Pro Men's Field. As Josh Button just set the time to beat. Knocking Jackson Fruit out of the hot seat. We got Sam Blankensaw, Mick Hanna, Connor Fearn, and Troy Brosnan left to go. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I'm watching this. Josh, congratulations grabbing that hot seat right now. You put, you, you shaved four seconds off your seating time. What was that run like? Ah, uh, quite good at the top. I got pretty tired at the bottom, to be honest. But I'm back, baby. <laughs> nice work. I'm not surprised you're tired. There's three pretty solid pedals in that course. Which one was the hardest? Um, oh, definitely the bottom. I felt like the middle pedals, I was able to put down a bit of power, but that bottom I just blew up. Well, great lead ahead of the rest of the field. We got four riders left to go, so get cozy. I'm not sure how long you're going to be there, but enjoy it while it lasts. Way to go, Josh Button. What a run. Thank you. Yeah. Man, he's guaranteeing himself a top five finish right there, putting in such a fast time. And he was happy with that. He was happy to be back, back in action. And like he said, you know, that bottom pedal, after you've done two pedals before that and all the pumping and physical bike riding. Yeah. <laughs> Which one is the hardest? Oh, man, that last one. Yeah, for those of you at home, get on your uh, cycle trainer, have your friend punch you in the face and sprint it out for four minutes. <laughs> and we're gonna interview you via Zoom. It's gonna be fun. All right, Sam Blankensop loading up into the gate. Just keeps getting better and better. This is how he's setting up his RockShox box or 170 PSI. Yeah, Blanky on course. Yeah, I think they've probably seen the bikes are a bit stiffer. That's what he was saying this morning. Just to try and uh, oh. be able to pump and keep that speed rolling. It's four seconds back, so I don't know if he's had a mistake or He's just not quite in the flow. So he's going to go inside to inside. And out into this kind of flat, Rudy straight bit. Blanky quite a ways back here, but he's lost a little bit more time. Lucky for us, he's one of the most entertaining riders to watch. Take to a downhill course, so smooth through there. Yeah. He did say to me this morning he's been struggling with the course all week. Will we see an ET from Blinky? Manual. Man. Yeah, another manual. <laughs> Putting down the watts. But it's, I don't think it's going to be enough. Blanky sprints it out through the third. line. Good enough for third right now with three left to go. Josh Button safe in that hot seat for the moment. So Josh is close to the podium. Oh, he's he's going to be nervous <laughs> waiting down there. If he can dodge one more bullet, he's going to be taking home a medal. It looked hard, so Blinky, same time as seating for him. Yeah, Sam Blankensop, a former king of Crankworks. He's a former World Cup round winner. Great to have him out here in Cairns. Fucking fast, punk. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, eh, the track? Yeah, it's fucking good. The bottom was a little bit slippery. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised, eh? How was it, eh? I stood out in the top corner. Oh, well, we've been talking about Mick Hanna all day. So exciting. He will be our next rider to drop. Of course, we had to seize the opportunity to put a camera in his face. Here's what he had to the say. The black setup is interesting for this event. It's, uh, the downhill's a little bit different style. It's really important to be able to generate and carry speed. So you just have to be really precise and execute all your turns and all those spots where you can generate speed really well. 
Well, I know somebody who is not only really good at being precise on their bicycle, but they also know every nook and cranny of this legendary downhill racetrack. Tracy Hanna grabbed the win for the pro women's field right there, cutting it close, only sliding into that top step of the podium by point one. This next family. <laughs> That's awesome. The kids with the cowbells, they're just going to love seeing their dad come <laughs> ripping down this mountain. What a, like they're probably the most excited, and that's saying something because everyone's excited. Here. Yeah, right? It was so fun watching them at the bottom of the track in this last World Cup. The kids cheering dad on. They're going to get to do it again here. The shocker is the uh, Australian hand signal by the looks of it. I love it. <laughs> It's just universal. Yeah, Everyone's throwing them up. I don't care what country and you throw the shot. Yeah. People know you. Yeah, all right, I can trust this person. <laughs> exactly. There we go, Mick Hanna. Currently living in Colorado, but man, born and raised right here in Cairns, Australia, right down the road. Yes, this is what we've been waiting for. Mick Hanna takes to this Cairns downhill track. Here's the moment of truth. He's gonna come, come flying on. to these roots. Come on, Mick. Oh, oh. it's so close. So close. Just 0.18 back. Foot out for that yes. Rudy corner there. Oh man, can he, he can pull in? that back. Just gets his cleat back in. He's going high line, inside, inside. Oh, one of the fittest guys in the game. Just 0.18 back. Oh, he's lost a little bit of back. time. Into this next drop. Smooth through there, keeping it low and fast. Over the step up, pretty smooth. Look it, we got the family cam in the corner there. Daddy. Come on. Daddy. Go, Mick. He. Come on, Mick. Final sprint, Mick Hanna. Come on, he's close. He's oh, close. So he does oh, it. Yeah, he does no it. way. Oh. Mick goes into the lead by point yes. six. Yeah, way to go, Mick. How close was that? <laughs> Oh, awesome. We did it all on that last bit. No doubt. You know, if anybody can dig deep and find some time in a pedal section, it's Mick Hanna. Guaranteed yes. podium for Mick. Oh, that, I'm so happy to see that. And look at his, his daughter there. <laughs> Two daughters. Dad's down safe and sound. And he's going to be having a nice shiny medal. Man, to think that he was back at those first couple of splits and he found time at the bottom, he was digging. It's, I guess it's fitness and it's he's just keeping that high intensity. Aerodynamic hairdo obviously was the X Factor. Mick, what a show, my man. Congratulations moving into that hot seat. What's it like racing here in Cairns, man? Uh, it's just incredible to be here at home. We got so much good support and we race so much overseas and it's cool to put on a show locally. Thanks for everyone for coming out and make sure you enjoy the show this weekend. And Mick, that looked really tough, that bottom bit of the course there. It's so physical. You managed to pull back some time and put yourself into, into the hot seat. So how did you do that on that last bit of the course? Yeah, I mean, it's just 14 seconds to bury yourself in it, so <laughs> no reason to hold back. I made a few mistakes at the top. Lost a little bit of time, so it was good to pull back a bit at the bottom. Awesome. Well done. <laughs> Mick, get in Thank that you. hot seat. You're the man. Let's hear from Mick Hanna, ladies and gentlemen. Way to go, yes. dude. Thanks. Awesome. Two riders left to go here. Pro men's category. Crankworks cans downhill. Gotta love seeing the hometown boy cross that finish line in the green. Goosebumps a little bit. I got goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting so very sweet. excited. Here we have Connor Ferron. So he's on flat pedals on the forbidden bike. So this is also a trail bike with a downhill fork. Well, it's working. Fastest time of the day so far was trail bike with a downhill fork as we welcome Connor Fear oh, to this course. Two, wow. two and a half up. Oh, he's on the edge too though, look at that. Rolling the dice. He's, um, he hasn't got, I haven't seen him getting his feet out yet, but he's able to get loose and he's got that confidence. He takes the outside line on that tree. Oh, oh he's, he's extending. extending. 3.1 in the green, Connor Fearon on a heater. Smooth through there. Let's see how he goes on this last sprint. He's got a good buffer, so he just needs to hold it. <laughs> Does he ever? <laughs> he 
Smooth, just rolling the speed. Connor, five high seconds. High. Four seconds of play. It's going to be close. Oh, it's going to be so close. Mick was so fast in that final stretch. Oh. Wow, just by point three. Connor Farron into the wow. lead. No way. Whoa. So Mick really pulled some time on that bottom section. Wow, so close right there. That just really goes to show how much time Mick made up on that bottom section. I mean, what, what did Connor have? He was like mid three seconds in the green. Yeah, he had a big buffer and it, it almost all slipped away, but yeah, Mick was just so fit and strong on that bottom bit. But Connor, you know, he made it up on the technical stuff. So Connor fearing. Grabs the hot seat with one rider left to go. Both Mick Hanna and Connor Fearon securing themselves a podium spot here. Crankworks cans downhill, but top seed from yesterday's qualifying runs, Troy Brosnan. One man left standing at the top of the course with an opportunity to grab that gold medal. Oh. So, I mean, we're seeing a bunch of different bike setups. Let's take a look at what Troy is riding. So, yeah, he's on a free ride bike, the Canyon Torque. And he's, um, he's actually reduced the, the front fork from 200 mil to, to 180 mil. He's changed the air spring in there just to keep the front end a bit lower, and he's got a 180 rear, 180 front. So, yeah, he just thinks that, it, you know, you can carry more speed, and on this, the flatter sections of this track, it actually pays off a lot. Well, we've seen similar bike setups perform really well the last two riders to drop on this course so the fastest rider from seating running a similar setup he's on the mullet the mixed wheel size which has been looking good this afternoon so troy bras is so accomplished at age 29 here National downhill champion of this great nation of Australia seven times in his career. He's won two World Cup downhill races. And look at that list of podiums on the UCI World Cup downhill series, 13 of them. It's, it's kind of weird seeing a podium with a knot on it the last few years in downhill. Totally, so consistent. And to have uh, such a long career and maintain that consistency, so impressive. There we go, last rider to take to this course, Troy Brosnan. This is gonna be good, Charlie. Let's have a look. Where's he gonna be? Oh, oh he's back. Yes, that's actually the most exciting thing when oh, somebody's just back by point three. He's just back, he's inside that tree. Oh, yeah. Here he goes, on the oh, pedals. Get it, boy! He's got the Australian cat and he's lost a little bit more time. Oh. Oh, he really has to dig deep in this last bit. Oh, Connor man. may have lost a little bit of time here, so we're just going to have to oh! see. E.T. We're moments away from knowing who's going to win this race. He's motoring towards the line. <laughs> Brosnan digging so deep here. Look oh, at this. He's got gonna time to it. play with. Gonna He's going to do it. Troy oh. Brosnan grabs the win. Look at that. He took two seconds off of the seating time. Wow, in that last pedal, he was just as impressive as Mick. How cool is that? And the Aussie cat coming down to the green. The Aussie sweep on the podium here at the Crankworks Cans downhill. Third place, Mick Hanna, Connor Fearing grabbing the silver, and Troy Brosnan grabbing the gold. Nice one. Bad for an old man. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dude, that was hard. You yeah. were going on the pedal. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I gotta use this bike. Yes. <laughs> gotta go. You're a bit of You're dying. My legs don't work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna Well done. Thanks. Nice one, bro. Yeah. Oh, that was so <laughs> impressive, that pedal.
Troy, what a show you just put on for us here. First of all, Aussie sweep on the podium, but big win. Digging deep, you said we just heard you on that camera there putting this bike to work. Talk to me about digging deep in that final sprint. Yeah, honestly, it was <laughs> the hardest thing ever. Like, you've got the mic on me straight away. I can't even breathe yet, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's a tough one. And honestly, I got to the end. Dad and Yacy are walking down the finish now. They were cheering at me, so I thought I'd better send it from the pedal. And I brought a little bit of smaller bike than my normal down a bike, and I really wanted to pedal hard, so I'm happy. You know what it's like to win. You know what it's like to stand on the top step of that podium. You've done it in so many different countries. What makes it different doing it here in your home country? Yeah, I mean, I've been to Whistler so many times and even all the other Crankworx events, but to have one at home and then get a win at home is just amazing. So I'm very stoked and the crowd's awesome. So cheers. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, go rest up those legs. Celebrate this big win. Let's hear it for him. Troy Brazen, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Wow, Troy Brazen, your winner in the Crankworx Cans Downhill. Oh, these riders given the crowd a lot to cheer for. Yeah, you can see he's just getting high up on the bank there, pumping every transition, and then he just sprinted so hard towards the <laughs> line. It was awesome. There it is. There's your final results. Mick Hanna grabbing the bronze. Connor Fearing with the silver medal, and Troy Brazen grabbing the gold. We've seen him on the top step of the Crankworx Downhill Podium so many times. He adds another notch in the belt there. Josh Button in fourth, Jackson Frew in fifth, Blanky sixth place, and then Bassman Steenberg and Graben 11th place points. I'm sure the next thing we'll do is we're gonna get the points tallied up to see what that does to the king of Crankworx overall standings. The ever evolving story, especially on a long season like we're in the middle of right now in the 2022 Crankworx World Tour. Bass Van Steenbergen narrows the gap a bit between himself and Thomas Lemoyne, but wow, this story is far from over. We got slope style tomorrow. We've got pump track, we've got slalom yet to go. And man, this is shaping up to be quite an exciting season, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's gonna, yeah, Bass is a, a specialist in pump track and dual. So he's got two events to come and one event at, uh, for Lemoyne in slope style. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. It's wild because yes, it's true to say that Bass Van Steenbergen's main events are Solomon pump track, but it's also true to say that Thomas Lemoyne's main events are slope style and pump track. So it's like they both have two big ones to come. And so it's gonna be fun to see what that tally looks like at the end of the week. But man, Charlie, what a race we just had. Final thoughts on this Crankworx Cans downhill. It just got more and more exciting as we yeah. went. And the times, it was crazy, because some people were putting heaps of time into their setting time, and some people were kind of doing the similar time that they'd done with a mistake, and that's what kept it so exciting. We couldn't predict anything. Yeah, I mean, the energy continued to build as we worked our way through the start list, but the energy is also going to continue to build because we have a big show for you tomorrow, the slope style. Here's a look at what you can expect. I hope you're going to join us tomorrow. Take a look. We to have the unbeatable force right now, Emil Johansson battling it out against riders like Eric Fedko, Tim Bringer, Thomas Lemoyne, Nikolai Rogatkin. Look at that, you know what that is? That is the Crankworx Triple Crown Trophy. We have seen it won in the past. Right now, there's a rider who has an opportunity to win it two years in a row. His name, his name is Emil Johansson. He has won the last eight Crankworx Slope Style competitions and we get to watch him Go for nine tomorrow, it's gonna be killer. I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna park up in the VIP uh, tent over there and just, just watch and then watch you and Alan, you know, break that down for us because those tricks are so impressive and there's so many spins and rotations. I can't even grasp what's going on half the time. It's gonna be crazy. It couldn't be further from World Cup downhill racing, but we have them back to back two consecutive days downhill today, slope style tomorrow. And then of course, we'll still have pump track and dual slaw. We are far from done here at Crankworks Cans. Got to throw a big thanks out to all the volunteers helping out make this event work. Thanks to Charlie Murray for joining me up in the booth. I've been your host, Cam McCall. We will see you tomorrow for Slopestyle.